I know that one of the things that's kind of important in your value system and as a teacher that you try and give, and maybe it's because of, in part because of your years teaching at MIT, but you, <laughs> you, you think of a holistic education. Yeah. And I guess uh, maybe today we're really talking about all of those things important to cello, which are sort of outside of or in addition to the lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How do you encourage those? Um, do you, are you able to influence parents? Are you able to influence the student? How do you uh, address that? Because I think we all realize that that one hour a week is not sufficient right, for sure. physical education. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's it's so interesting. We Our goal is to speak through our cello, but I think one effective means to help foster that actually is to think about music uh, beyond the cello. So uh, first in lessons, there are simple things with just singing a lot. And so, um, so that we are not necessarily limited by whatever technique we have at the time on the cello, but to think of it musically first. So uh, one thing I do with students, say, who are playing Dvorak concerto is required listening that we listen together is the song to the moon from Rosalka. And that aria really informs this kind of um, style of legato and color. And you can get students to think outside of the cello to try to have ideas and inspiration. So do you assign listening? Yeah, and the key is then listening together. I so um, uh, I love opera, and uh, you know that's our ideal, especially for anything cantilena. Um, but I always, from not only an expressive standpoint, but for intonation, it's very important for me that students can sing what they're playing. Uh, when I was in high school, I had the good fortune to have a great solfege teacher. And so our final project every year was to sing our jury piece in front of the class and conduct. Wow. And when you're going through puberty and singing in front of people, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you, you, you remember those things. Yeah. Um, you know, so there are things like that where um, I try to encourage my students to think about music as a whole, uh, playing piano, or at the very least having the physical sensation, even if you don't play piano, to play through the piano parts of pieces that you play, uh, to be able to play basic chorale, so when you play in a quartet that you really hear the notes that the cello is playing, where they're going harmonically. Um, so those are some of the things that, um, you know, it's all music in the end, and so... How, how far do you take this, uh, just in terms of reading, fiction, going to a museum, uh, you know, yeah. you, it, it can go on and on. Yeah. Well, one thing that I really find interesting is that, um, you know, when you study a musical instrument, you're so focused on yourself. And I like to try to have my students do things where they can see it from the audience's point of view. Um, so one thing I like to do is encourage my students to self-produce their own concert. So uh, a lot of high school students, they have to do volunteering, for example. And so that's a natural where they can produce their own concert and have the experience of, say, uh, dealing with a presenter, booking a hall, um, trying to get an audience. And just to see that there is a world, what are, what are we doing this for? It's to share our music, share our ideas. Um, yeah, why does music exist in the world? Yeah. I think that's important because, I mean, not of course, not everybody uh, that we teach at the high school level is going to become a professional musician, but just to be aware of the function, that there's a reason for music yeah. in the world, that, that we as musicians have a, a function, a reason to be, yeah. beyond just, oh, it's... I like it. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. And you know, of course, it's very self-gratifying, but sharing it is, is really the goal. Mm -hmm. So um, along those lines, you know, there are other things. Um, one thing that I did when I was at Project Step that uh, I was very proud of was uh, we would have classes, etude classes, where an older student would perform their etude and then talk about what they were trying to work on in the etude. Mm -hmm. and so. Um, but then they would be paired up with a younger student playing an etude, and then they would actually work with a younger student. And of course, they would have coaching, um, just because you know they're new to teaching. But trying to explain what you're doing to somebody else mm -hmm. is really the uh, the best way to know if you really understand it. 
One, one final question, uh, since you teach at MIT, that's kind of a u unique perspective. Do you find that uh, your music students, your cello students, uh, that may be in engineering or sciences or wherever in mathematics, or do those disciplines bring anything advantageous to the making of music? Oh, I think so. Um, definitely on the analytical side. Their analytical capabilities help them solve technical problems? Yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. yeah. But, yeah. you know, more than anything else, these are all people who are doing it for the love of it. And yeah. uh, so it really comes through. Yeah. So uh, it's a whole different set of uh, priorities for them. But yeah. in the end, um, you know, in the way it's the most pure uh, enjoyment. Yeah, right motive, right reasons to play. Right.